I'm council meeting for Wednesday, April 1st, 2020, and this is being done via Zoom teleconference um, and some of our members calling into the meeting. Since Carl has a flag in his office, I guess we can all say the, uh, the pledge. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. That was the weirdest pledge we'd ever have, huh? <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> yeah, we're Setting a new standard. So, first of all, just thank you to everyone for, for coming out to the meeting like this. We all know it's kind of a, a unique situation, but thank you all for, for coming and getting involved. Um, is there any visitors that are on the screen that would like to be recognized at this time? Okay, then we can move on to number three, which is the approval of the minutes for the March 18th meeting. We have a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Second. Dennis here. I'll second it. Okay, is there any discussion on any of the minutes? Okay. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Thank you. Um, Number four, which is the appointments and resignations at this, uh, for this meeting, we don't have either of those. Um, so we can move on to the next two items, which are the ordinances that we're gonna be putting into place. Um, so the Liberty Green Historic District revised ordinance. First, uh, first of all, did everybody receive these and get a copy of these and review them? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so at this point, on this one, there was, I guess, a revision, Mary, for one of the sections? Yeah, the first section for the term. Okay, so everybody got that revision? Uh, no, they did not get that. Okay. The term should be four years. Okay, that's on the historic. I'm the, we're on the, the historic district. One for Could you repeat that? The charter in the section 7-7 of the charter describes the historic district commission as a four-year term. The ordinance says five-year term. The draft ordinance before you has the five-year term. So we have to have harmony between the charter and the ordinance. So is essentially, that yeah. is that the only change? Correct. So if that's the only change. Um, oh, hang can... on. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Dennis. I read where it says all appointments shall be made by the Board of Selectmen, should not be by the Town Council. We can update now. Yes. So any correct, we can make any corrections to these ordinances. And then what we can do is we can still approve and move the ordinance to the public hearing. So any corrections or revisions that people have, we will make, the, you know, make those revisions. But yet we can still approve. We can have a motion to approve this ordinance this morning and then set a public hearing date. So the term obviously would need to be adjusted to four years. And the appointments um, would be made by the, the town council. Okay, so you're saying that we could still uh, make some changes uh, even after we pass this ordinance uh, because there's a couple of things in the second paragraph on the organization that sort of uh, I don't understand a little bit. Okay. For way down, I almost the last sentence, I guess, uh, when it says, uh, when a member of the commission is unable to act at a particular time because of absence, sickness, disqualification by reason of personal interest or other good reason, I would put he or she shall, and I don't like the idea, and I hope everybody will think about this, that just the chairman shall designate the alternate member to serve in place. Usually yeah, the committee uh, have a motion made and uh, at that particular night, 
uh, a committee that have alternate or a commission, they make a motion to seat an alternate. I, I, I'm a little hesitant just to say that the chairman will designate uh, an alternate member. So I just put that out there for food for thought and uh, I'll await other people's uh, opinion. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dennis. Anyone else? Hmm. I mean, again, this could be a first read for us because obviously if there's some things that people would like updated and changed, we certainly can hold off, you know, address the, the, um, the issues and the things that need to be corrected and then bring it back to the next meeting. And then, because again, a public hearing at this point, obviously, as we understand, you know, where we are with things, we do have some time. So it's not imperative that we do all this right today. Good. So if everybody would like to maybe just circle back on this, table it, put it on for the next meeting, and then we can just discuss any, you know, any changes that people have and would like to discuss further. That sounds good. I'll make exactly. a motion yeah. to the next Second. meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Second. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Okay. So then the Liberty Green then will be tabled to the next meeting. Um, and then the next one, which is the town historian ordinance, uh, same situation. Everybody has a copy of the um, the ordinance codifying the position of the town historian. Again, same brought up on the one. This one also indicates a five-year term. So we this term limit on this one would have to be reduced to four. Under number five. This codifies what you guys agreed to at a prior meeting. Yes. Because you put a term limit on the town historian, it should be wrapped up in an ordinance. Um, so this reflects the language of what you've already acted on by motion and the recommendation you had from the historic district commission. So in terms of the scope of the duties and the reporting mechanism back to the town council in the five-year term, that's a function of uh, decisions you've made already. This just codifies it in an uh, ordinance form. So would we have to do anything else in order to make a correction to the previous motion that we had approved? You only made a motion. You didn't make it anything that would be permanent and lasting okay. beyond that meeting. So if it's the will to give this a five-year term on a consistent basis, you should pass an ordinance for that effect. Hmm. I mean, I guess the recommendation would be to correct this and make the town council should make an appointment for a term of four years as opposed to the current five. Does anybody feel that's a big issue? Uh -uh. No. Make it I have no issue. Okay. Anybody else? No. No. Question, Chris. Point. If we make it four, do we not need the ordinance? No, we still need the ordinance. Okay. You don't have a position described anywhere officially. Say that again, Carl. You don't have this position described anywhere officially. Right. So this at right. least creates a structure to have it. It lays out what the duties are. It lays out what the qualifications are, which was the issue you had previously. And it picks up a five-year term, which is what you guys passed as a resolution pre uh, as a motion previously. So essentially what we've been doing is changing the term limit to um, fall in line with what the charter indicates, correct? There, there is no charter or term limit for this position. There isn't? Okay. This isn't described anywhere. So we're just firming it up. We're just um, making a more concrete uh, job description. It's, uh, so basically our discussion right now is just between whether it's four years or five years. Right, but we had that discussion when we first yeah. passed the resolution is what Carl's saying a couple right. of weeks ago or whenever. And we came to the decision about five years. Uh, yep. If it's not contrary to the charter, I see no reason why not just leave it five years. Okay. Unless anybody disagrees. 
I mean, if you'd like to make a motion, we can we can move forward with the ordinance okay. as is, and then I I'll make that here. motion, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. We have a second. I make a motion oh. Oh, that we ahead. accept and enforce an ordinance codifying the position of town historian as presented. Second. I'll second, Tim. Any other further discussion? And send to public hearing. And send to public hearing, correct. Which, I don't know, when are we going to do that? Yeah. Oh, well. It, it might make sense to try and do the two together at one public hearing. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, be nice. Okay. So can we do a public hearing date to be determined? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, Mary? Yes. Okay. All right. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. All right, we're gonna move on to number seven, which is the chairman's report. Um, so there's a couple of things that I kind of want to do address. Um, first and foremost, the website. There's been a lot of updates recently to the website. So if you haven't gone there recently, please do. Mary's done a great job of updating a lot of stuff yep. on the website. Uh, boards and commissions uh, specifically have been updated. And some of the links that are on there now directly relate to, to the policy that we had put in place as it relates to boards and commissions and um, replacing vacated seats. So there's uh, applications for unaffiliated to complete. There's also a process uh, which we discussed as you know, having anybody who feels they're interested in a board or commission that they can actually submit an application for that open position. Um, that's on there. Blue Book is on there. Um, so please, you know, direct yourselves, take a look at that. Because um, I believe that, you know, that's going to be very helpful on our part going forward. And please, anybody that you talk to, uh, please remind them of this new policy so then that way they can get acclimated to that as well. That um, is fantastic. Thank you, Mary. Great job, Mary. Yes. Great job, Mary. Thank you. She did a great job. Nice um, job, Mary. So next, um, due to this crisis that we are in, there's a lot of issues um, that a lot of the citizens and people are having, getting a lot of questions, concerns, um, as it relates to the budgetary process going forward and how it's going to work. Um, I'm kind of doing the best I can as it relates to some of the people that are having comments, um, specifically on the All Things Clinton uh, Facebook page as it relates to the process, what they think we can and can't do. I just want to address this so that we all understand and we're all on the same page as it relates to that. Um, the budgetary process that we have to uh, comply to this year relates to the executive order that came from the governor's office. That applies to all, you know, all municipalities, not just Clinton. So I think people are mis, uh, misconstruing what, what's being said as it relates to the fact that they think that we're going to have the ability now to just approve our budget and not care about what they say and not have any input from the public. Um, so making sure that we understand the executive order, that there is a process that's in place that we will have to follow, five items that have to be met as it relates to the public input, so that they will have some say in it. I hope all the people that are out there complaining about it, you know, actually get involved and, and voice their opinions as it relates to the budget process. Um, it's important for them to still be involved. I think we all agree on that. Uh, I think we are going to have our hands full as we move forward with the budgetary process, knowing that the, you know, the climate that we're in right now, um, but I guess we'll, you know, we'll fight that fight down the road. I would like everybody to understand that if people call you about it, ask you about it, that you direct them to, to that executive order so that they can understand that we are being directed how the budgetary process works. This isn't something where the town of Clinton, the town council, the town manager, this isn't what we're coming up with. So we're just following the guidelines that are set forth by the governor's office under an executive order, which means we have no authority to change it. Um, okay, this is probably obvious, but is that posted on the website also? We, we have posted, yes. 
Okay, um, good. Thank you. you know, so that information is out there. We'll continue to update that as well as we go forward so that people understand that. Um, the second issue that they're having is that, you know, they think that we're going to, we're going to like increase spending for whatever reason. Um, again, anybody that you hear from that you speak to, there will be no additional spending for the town of Clinton as it relates to this crisis. The only way that we could, um, the, the only way that we could any, uh, impact any emergency spending would be that if the town declared a state of emergency, that would allow us to specifically use funds related to this emergency. We are not there, you know, so that, that's not even on the table right now. Um, you know, what we're doing and what we're abiding by budgetarily is related to us, is, is related to us from the governor's office. So, Chris? Yes. Can I make a, a suggestion that um, uh, Carl puts out a statement answering those questions on the town website? Um, because there are a lot of people asking very similar questions on the board, on social media, people stopping me in the grocery store, all of it. And I'm sure you're all hearing it. So it's everything from emergency spending to the governor's executive order. Most people are not going to be in that executive order that relates to the town. Boil it. Yep. Statement. Okay. okay. All right. Great for everybody. Going to be great. Well, as to um, you know his view. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Chris. Yes. May I ask a question, Chris? Yeah. Uh, I I assume that uh, Carl may be working on, and Carl can obviously weigh in on this. What happens if our taxable <laughs> taxes are diminished because people will be unable to pay them? Uh, some of our businesses in town, i.e. restaurants, are not open. Mm -hmm. no income. How are they going to pay their rent, pay their taxes? Do we have anything in place to adjust our spending to potential loss of income? I mean, I guess I, I mean, maybe Carl can address that when he gets to his report. Um, okay. All right. You know, but I mean, again, the, I, you know, this whole world that we live in now is uncharted waters for everybody. And it's, oh, yeah, know, no, it's, no. it's going to affect yep. everybody. And the thing that, you know, again, as a town, those are things that we would have to discuss on a town is how we, you know, how we handle these situations. Um, you know, it's just, I, I'm more, I'm more afraid of, you know, People having, you know, people having the feeling that they're not going to be heard, number one, and that we're going to just do what, we're, what we want to do and not care about anything else. Um, I just want to make sure that people understand, you know, like Christine says, yes, people are, you know, they have their opinions on it. You know, I've tried to kind of put some stuff out there on the Facebook post to let them know that, you know, things aren't the way they perceive them to be. Um, but again, it, you know, those are things that we're going to have to address going forward and we'll continue to have to address them, you know, as, as things pop up, you know. So my concern as a whole is that you know, as a council, we're all working under the same, um, you know, the same message that we deliver to people, you know, who, who are asking these questions. So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page with that. Um, other than that, um, you know, I think, you know, again, you know, as a town, I think we're doing a great job. You know, people are, are helping each other. People seem like they're concerned. They want to, they want to help. You know, we need to, like Mark had said, I guess, you know, we, we do need to find these ways where we're going to be able to help people because it is going to affect us as a town as well. So um, I think everybody just needs to be patient because we're going to do our best to, to help and, and do what we can to help um, everybody. Um, but it is going to take some time because it's new to everybody. And uh, nobody knows know kind of how to handle these things there's no there's no footprint on how we're going to handle all this so that is my report um does anybody have any other questions for me nope all right then we will move on to carl town manager's report number eight there? Okay. Hello. All right. Uh, 
My understanding at this point, to respond to, to Mark's comments, that there is a, uh, an effort right now in the governor's office to look at some sort of local tax uh, amendment or revision within an executive order. Uh, specifically, it would be to allow for deferring property tax payments for up to 90 days. Uh, if that business was financially impacted by COVID-19, uh, and then that would have uh, some sort of reduction or elimination of the, the late tax payment um, interest rate. It's not official yet, uh, nor do we know what the language is. Uh, the municipal advocacy groups are trying to work with the governor's office on something that uh, would make sense. Obviously, it's a local economic development opportunity to support uh, the business community. We don't have the ability to print money like the federal government. Uh, but this does provide for some level of local relief. Uh, it's really going to get down into the weeds of how the program is going to be rolled out and administered. Preference would be that it be uh, universal across the state rather than let's say each 169 municipalities figure it out. Um, so there's something that might come on, on that front. Uh, additionally, another executive order came out last night. Um, well, it doesn't pertain specifically to what we're doing. Uh, it does allow for a curbside pickup of alcoholic beverages. Um, this commissioner of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection has the ability to close state park lands if uh, utilization is high and social distancing is failing. Uh, but I think for the local concern is really more uh, the order requires a continuation of funding for boards of education. Uh, employees that were laid off have to return to work. Um, so the Board of Ed is to operate as normal through the end of its year um, per the Governor's Executive Order 7. I'm sorry, what was that? The Board of Ed what? The Board of Education is to continue operating and employing its employees uh, through this. So if people were laid off, they are to be returned to work. Okay. So um, per, per the governor's order, the Board of Education is supposed to operate uh, it with its staff as normal. Obviously, they're not going to be in school and distance learning and other type of activities will be driving how the Board of Ed delivers education. Carl, oh, Carl I've had um, folks yes? ask the question whether the town be giving back funds um, now as in terms of reimbursement. And what I was trying to explain, again, perhaps another Topic that can be covered and shared with the public, either through you or through the superintendent uh, together. Uh, that if there are, uh, if there's a surplus at the end of the fiscal year through the board of ed, it has to go to the general fund and doesn't mean spend it now. And that is not how the ed operates either. I don't know if it's worth it just getting the message now. The budget's paid. The process, but I didn't really get much of that. It was an awful lot of feedback on the line right now. Uh, so there was a lot of choppiness. I couldn't really hear the full question. To repeat it. I've had uh, the question whether or not the Board of Ed will be getting to residents right now. My explanation. A surplus, it will be to the town fiscal year once everything bills paid, etc. I explained that the Board of Ed does not have a history of running expenses and that um, it not if uh, I'm not getting any of that. Yeah, I think if, if everybody could use their line except for Christine so we could. Eliminate some of the feedback. It would it would help get let her get the, her idea across. Mm -hmm. Step aside, see if it's any better. Is this any better? Okay, I muted everyone. Better. I muted everyone except Carl and Chris and Christine. So, a questions being asked of me are whether or not the Board of Education will be returning funds to the town earlier rather than later because of um, not utilizing some of the resources that you would during a normal school year. 
Um, I've tried to explain that if there are funds that are not expended, they will be returned to the town um, at the end of the fiscal year after expenses and bills are um, completed. I don't know if this is a topic that could be included in a email or, or excuse me, email in the, um, the post on the website related to the governor's executive order or a topic that gets picked up at later the date. But it does have implications for the perception of how this budget process will go. Yeah, I mean, it, they would still follow the same process they've always followed, which would be if there's excess funds, that would be reconciled at the end of the year. The notion that they are not going to be spending their money uh, the way they had originally planned perhaps is not going to. Uh, is not where the new executive order that came out at eight o'clock last night really uh, directs. Uh, so they have to hire back people that they laid off and have to maintain full staffing. Um, there's also an expectation that they're going to be able to maintain uh, their uh, transportation contracts and pay the bus company. Um, so that was a executive order seven R would seem to start having the Board of Ed looking more like it's operating regularly. So the amount of money that they turn back um, is subject to debate, but the timing of any turn back would not be till the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, I, I think it might be useful to explain that to them because I, I don't think most understand that process because um, it's something that happens um, in the background. You know, the funds get returned at the end of the fiscal year after, again, the bills have all been expended and into the not um, it's not a, as apparent as the very process that we're going through now where everything printed in the paper people will see that information. I think the executive order that came out last night starts to take the wind out of the sails that there was some windfall coming out of the board of ed. The expectation yeah. is that every board of education will have to maintain its employment levels. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, for the rest of the report, um, as, as you all know from the prior email I sent you, we went through a deep cleaning of the building uh, as a safety precaution. Uh, we utilized an emergency purchase to bring, a, bring in a vendor without bidding uh, because of the time sensitivity and the apparent risk uh, in order to get the buildings squared away as quickly as possible. Um, the expectation is that that would likely be an expense we could recoup through a FEMA reimbursement uh, if that's uh, whenever that application process will flow forward out of the feds. Uh, River Cog, they uh, are going through the same process we all are of trying to figure out how to have public meetings, public hearings, and get public input uh, in the day of social distancing. Uh, so the Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan and Regional Conservation uh, Plan of Conservation Development are all working through how they're going to get the public to be involved uh, and receive public comment on, on the process for both of those plans. Uh, as I noted in writing, we do have a quote from our prior vendor uh, if needed to assist in the FEMA reimbursement process. Uh, right now that quote is, is at about $10,000. Um, if, if it's needed, it's something we can uh, can take a look at at that point in time. I did give you as an attachment to the report an overview of some of the stimulus monies that have come uh, out of the federal government. The dollars that are aimed uh, to localities are all going to flow through the federal government or through the state government. They're not going to be direct to towns. Um, so we'll have to be keeping an eye on how the state of Connecticut plans on distributing those dollars. Uh, there is a paid leave program that goes into effect uh, today uh, for a, a paid leave for individuals who are impacted by COVID-19. Um, that is not paid leave that goes that is reimbursed as it stands today. If a private sector employer has to follow through, there's a tax credit that they get, which is an offsetting uh, expense. The public sector does not get the benefit of the tax credit, and there is no offsetting expense. Um, there are discussions and in D.C. right now as to whether or not municipalities will be able to get um, some sort of reimbursement at, through a different program at another point in time uh, rather than having to shoulder that expense uh, singularly through this effort. But as it stands now, 
that's a public sector expense that is expected to be paid without reimbursement. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where we stand now, not knowing what else is going to come out uh, by way of governor executive order. The pattern seems to be they come out at night. Um, so we learn it uh, depending on when it comes out. Um, whatever happens with the a tax relief program, obviously we'll be monitoring uh, to see what comes forward. And for public hearings, particularly a, a public hearing before the budget and now for ordinances, we are looking at other electronic platforms other than Zoom. Um, this platform allows for 100 people to participate. And while that might fit the normal box of how we've done business, um, we're looking at a platform that allows for greater than that for a level of participation on the off chance that you do get more people participating because more people are at home um, and having the time on their hands to participate in local government. Um, so we're looking at uh, licensing and platforms that allow for more than 100. I don't want to do what New Haven had to do during its public uh, budget process. They were telling people to get off the line so that they could stay in that 100 um, participant threshold. Um, so we're looking at something that would mirror a virtual uh, auditorium uh, to have, have a higher level of participation. If we don't have that level of participation, I think it was probably a, it would be a good, good effort to expend the dollars on a higher level of participation on the chance that we get it rather than trying to assume we don't get it. And that's the extent of what I've got uh, today. At the next meeting, we'll have some uh, budget transfers uh, to take place, including the one that will finance the uh, repair or the, the cleaning of the town hall. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Carl, can I, if, may I make a comment, Chris? Yeah. Carl, I, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate all your time and energy and effort that has had to go into all of this. You've been superhuman and um, just so forward thinking and everything that's been going on. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And I'm sure we all appreciate it. You came on at a very difficult time and you have handled it like a champion and uh, I am very, very grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. Here, here. I stole my words, Carol. Uh, I'd also like to extend it to our chairman. Yeah. I want to thank both of them uh, for their leadership during this time. I think the community really appreciates these updates that they're getting and the straight back. And again, I concur with Carol. Thank you, Mr. Kilduff. Thank you, Chris, for being our leaders at this time. Absolutely. Good job. Thank you very Great much. Great job. Yeah. Likewise. Okay. All right. Does anybody? Um, one one thing that I missed on the chairman's report is that also on on these um, positive tests that if somebody should test positive. Please understand if people are asking, we get that direction from the local health district. They would contact the town should somebody test positive in Clinton. That doesn't necessarily mean that everybody that tests positive we're notified of. It is the individual who basically gives the right for the health district to release any information. So I just want people to understand that, that, you know, because sometimes there's been some talk about how you know, we only heard about one or two, and now people see the, the, the paper, and there's up to five or six. You know, we're not withholding any information. We're providing and passing through the information that were provided by the health district as it relates to positive tests. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else? No. Okay. Thank oh, you again, everyone, for, uh, for joining the meeting today. Um, and at this point, I will accept the motion to adjourn. Come on. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Again, thank you all. Please stay healthy and safe. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.